So what I'm going to start with the, to get the conversation going is really to ask you what your biggest challenges are in fleet management. Quite a good answer. Okay. You just fill us in on what you know, what you don't know. Toro. So I'm sitting with these, these discs that are in a box uh, until this, is it happening? When is it happening? Okay, so this is ETOL specifically. Yes, yes. Okay. Exactly. David, do you have any insights that you want to share? I'm sure to comment more on the IT side of things, because obviously we're developing our own platform, basically, which will link up. So to make that transaction easier so that we become your one-stop <coughs> shop. But to get to the technical issues with regards to the yeah. IT system, we want to comment So first of all, is it going to happen? We don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so we can't answer that. <coughs> but if it does happen, is Standard Bank ready to, to assist you? Absolutely. And in essence, what we've done is you, sit, you rightly said that you sit with the box and you've got those tags, and we're happy that you uh, haven't issued them to your drivers just yet. But what will happen is that when those, when, let's say it does go live, okay, and you fit that on so that um, e tag to your vehicle, what then will happen is, is as you drive through any one of these toll gates, those transactions will immediately come through to us. So it's real time. We've been testing with Samuel real time transactions as well, because obviously while Samuel is doing what they need to do, we have been testing with it. And what we have is we've got some test tags, and then we actually look at the validity of the transaction, we look at the transaction coming through, we look at reconciling the transaction, we look at the discounts that need to be provided to those transactions, because as for Sano, what they also said is that you get frequent discounts if you're a frequent driver, you get time of day discounts, and all of that you need to cater for, and we need to make sure that that comes through correctly. So in our testing, in turn testing that we've done with Sano thus far, <coughs> yes, on a, on a small number of vehicles we've tested, but we are happy with the integrity of the information that we get, we're happy with the way that we actually report to our customers and in essence what we have done is we've also enhanced some of the products that we provide to our customers that will make it a lot easier for you when you need to reconcile those transactions that you will be able to do that. But if for some reason that you believe that that transaction is not valid or you believe that the transaction you want to query that transaction, we become your key account holder. So in essence you will actually, if today you've got a problem with a fuel transaction, you refer it to us. Likewise what will happen is that if you have a problem with a toll transaction, you will refer it to us. We have access to their database, we can actually go and look at the, the photograph of the vehicle and what will happen is that we can actually pull it off the website and we can show you that your vehicle has actually tra travelled underneath the gantry. So those are the kind of testing that we have been doing with, with Samuel and those are the kind of, of functions that we will be able to perform on behalf of our customers. Okay, what, what happens with our transactions is that we block it. Okay, remember when David spoke about transactions? Yeah, sorry, yes. I need to phone you to say block it. So no, 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 you don't need to phone me. What will happen is that there are two things, well, there are three things that will happen. Number one, you will detect that the transaction is not yours. You get in contact with us immediately, we block the car. From that point in time when you tell us to block the car, no transaction can take place at 95% of terminals out there as we're rolling out to 100%, one of these days 100% online. The other part is that we have a staff member that sits and goes through all transactions. We have checks and balances in, in our offices, We our risk consultants go out and they look at transactions and they highlight transactions that they believe are irregular, get in contact with you, find out if your drivers are there, if you say no, they highlight that vehicle and they stop the vehicle and give you a new car. Okay. The third option is our system. Our system itself does certain checks and balances. And that's when we saved 228 million in 2011, 257 <coughs> last year, and standing on 72 million today. And how do we do that? In essence, what happens is that we do some pre-checks on every single transaction <coughs> that comes in. And if one of those pre-checks are not matched, okay, we will then cancel the transaction and we will decline the transaction at point of sale. So invariably what we do is that when there is a current transaction and our system detects it, transaction is declined, driver cannot use it. Whoever's got the card cannot use it. The challenge for us is, is obviously we also have various drivers or, or let's say no dedicated driver of a vehicle. So for us to manage diesel or fuel properly, we need to do it by trip, by driver. And that, that is, that's a challenge. So, so we managed to, to integrate the, 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 not the fuel master, but easy fuel, or OTI, Correct. with mixed telematics, because we need to have kilometers. That's actually my point. You need kilometers online, real time, and preferably identification on driver, which we now got. So it, our, our challenge at the moment is we, we want the kilometers also with Standard Bank because you do our repairs and maintenance for us. Mm -hmm. So to be able to get a CPK figure, you need accurate kilometers per vehicle. 
And I don't know why the marriage between yourselves and Big Stellematics has taken so long. But all we need is the, to, for you to take the kilometers from Big Stellematics and fit it with your repairs and maintenance figures, and we will have a CPK figure on, on the repairs and maintenance. But coming back, I think a challenge is real-time online kilometers. If you don't have a dedicated driver. Yeah, I think what you see here with NSA is that the carbon tax, so that, that was put in place, I think, September 2010. Uh, I think it was something like 75 rands uh, for every gram per kilometer over a threshold of 120 grams per kilometer. Europe, on the other hand, basically by 2015, the EU wants to get to, if I'm not mistaken, about 230 grams per kilometer maximum limit, and then by 2020 down to 95, if I'm not mistaken. So those are drastic changes, but it goes to Javi's point as well, basically cleaner fuels and so on and so on, everything that goes around with that. So I think to your question why most people haven't given it much thought is because it's a once-off tax when you purchase a new vehicle right now, basically. So you just pay for it and you don't think about it and it stops there. So I think we're still waiting to see where government actually takes this with regards to cars. I mean, there's been a lot of talk within the press recently with regards to carbon emissions and going green and so on and so forth, but I haven't seen much specific to vehicles. Yeah. Huge problem. We we soon realized that, and the stats is actually one out of ten drivers that we test off the street. Eventually, we can maybe appoint. Meaning, he has now passed the criminal credit check. He has may he has, has passed a, a basic driving skills mm -hmm. reverse that type of thing test. And yes, we can now appoint him. One out of ten. So. We soon realized we will never fill the compliment. So we started doing our own driver training, where we took people in the beginning virtually off the street, <coughs> and we trained them up as drivers. Now that is close to 50% of our compliment already, which are mainly younger people.